Welcome to another episode of In The Zone. I am your host, Chris Broussard. We've got another really great show for you today. We had none other than LeVar Ball in the house right here on this very chair for an interview, along with his middle son, LeAngelo Ball, who is in this year's draft. So we had a great conversation with them. Of course, as always, another exciting, intense debate with me and Jason McIntyre in Knockdown J. But first, I'm going to hit you with this week's top five. And look, we're all talking about, we're all wondering, we're all deliberating over where will LeBron James play next season. Not where I think he's going. It's where I would like to see him go most. So at number five, the fifth place I'd like to see him go will be the Houston Rockets. They're very close. You know, they're, they, are, they took the Warriors to seven games. You give them LeBron James, and on paper, you would think they get on the hump, over the hump. But here's the issue. To get LeBron, it probably had to be an elaborate sign and trade with the Cleveland Cavaliers that would cost you, even if Cleveland's willing to do it, but it could cost you Eric Gordon. It could cost you Trevor Ariza, not Trevor Ariza, but P.J. Tucker. You'd lose a lot of your role players, some of your shooters. It wouldn't quite be the same team, and that's assuming they could even bring back Clint Capella. So this Houston team might look differently, but you would do it for LeBron James to have him with Chris Paul and James Harden. Number four, the Los Angeles Lakers. And again, this is where I think he'll end up. But for me, it would be the fourth place I'd like to see him go. And we don't know who he goes with, but if he goes with Paul George, they're certainly a contender, even if that's all they have. If he goes with Paul George and Chris Paul, so say they sign Chris Paul and LeBron and then trade, even maybe before, they trade for Paul George. Get rid of some of those young guys, Lonzo Ball, maybe Brandon Ingram, some others, throw in a contract to make it work financially and they get Paul George, that's something special. That's something that would be exciting. Third on the list, another Western Conference team, San Antonio Spurs. Now, here's why I'd like to see him in San Antonio. All the players that LeBron is compared with historically, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, Shaquille O'Neal, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, they all had all-time great coaches that led them to either all of their championships or most of their championships. LeBron James has never had that. With all due respect to Eric Spolster, Ty Lue, all the coaches he's played for, good coaches, but never had an all-time great coach like the guys he's compared to. San Antonio, obviously you get that with Greg Popovich. We see how Greg Popovich makes the most out of role players. Patty Mills, Danny Green, Matt Bonner, Gary Neal at one point. I mean, guys that don't shine elsewhere shine on the Spurs. You give them LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, assuming they work that out, of course, and LaMarcus Aldridge, and I guarantee, guarantee, that LeBron James will win at least one more title. <laughs> number two, the Boston Celtics. There's a number of reasons to go here, one of which is that you stay in the Eastern Conference. If LeBron James goes to Boston, they're definitely in the NBA Finals. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, barring injuries. And here's the thing, LeBron would extend his streak of straight finals to nine, which is incredible and 10 overall, and when he, we, he's talked about chasing the ghost of Michael Jordan. He's obviously not gonna be undefeated in the finals. Who knows if he can win six titles. You've also got a great front office that you know is going to continue to improve the team because they'll be committed to it and they have the assets to do it. You've got a great coach, we all know, in Brad Stevens. You've got great young players and older veterans like Gordon Hayward, Al Horford. Now, unfortunately, you probably, you'd have to trade Kyrie Irving because we know he really doesn't want to play with LeBron James. That's why he left Cleveland in the first place. But I would be willing to do it as much as I like Kyrie to get LeBron James. And at number one, the place I would most like to see LeBron James go. Not saying he goes there, but where I would like to see him go most, the Philadelphia 76ers. 
You could argue Boston's a better fit. I do think Boston is a more seamless fit, you know, because Ben Simmons and LeBron, you know, how do they work together? But I personally would like to see them try because you got the great big man in Joel Embiid. Ben Simmons can run the point. And I was told LeBron would be willing and even like to play off the ball if he had a teammate who could make plays for other guys, not just for himself, but for other guys. Ben Simmons can do that. Philadelphia has the size, the athleticism, and they have the shooting to compete with a Golden State in the finals. I would love to see that. So those are the top five places I would like to see LeBron James go. Man, it's an honor to have one of our best guests of all time, LeVar Ball. That's what I'm talking about, man. <laughs> and like Angelo Ball, the middle son. Yep. We, now, and, I, and I know everybody wants to hear from your dad. I want to start with you. Lonzo obviously playing in the NBA. We know a lot about him. LaMelo seems to be the most colorful personality of the three. Is that fair? It, see, it comes uh, yeah, off yeah, that way. Yeah. You know, and people know about him. Tell me about yourself. You seem to be, I don't know if you're the quietest, but you're the least well-known in my opinion. So tell, tell us about yourself. I'm not quiet like that. I mean, <laughs> when I get to know people, they, they always tell me I'm funny and stuff, and they okay. say I'm the funniest. So I don't know. I guess I, when I warm up, that's how I am. What, what your game, uh, we know what Lonzo plays like. What is your game like, your basketball game? Well, I look at myself as a pure scorer. Like, me and Zoe play way different. He been yeah. getting people involved, love passing, enhancing other pe people around him. But when I play, that's why I feel like I'll do good with him because if I love to score and he love to get people the ball, mm -hmm. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out. Now, you you a shooter. That's what I do know that about you. What about your, you know, mid-range game off the dribble, going to the hole? You know, things finishing at the rim, how's that? I have all the, I mean, I take what they give me, and most of the time they sagging off or whatever, so I'm going to shoot it if you're not fully on me. So that's how I play. But I could do the other stuff. Like, if you're running, up, running out on me crazy, I'm going to go around you and stuff. Okay, so. okay. So what, how, I know you're in the draft. How confident are you? Because you've seen, you guys have seen people saying you might not get drafted and things like that. What, how confident are you that you're going to get drafted? I'm confident in myself knowing that. I'm going to get picked. I mean, I've been working out for this all my life, so okay. it's not going to shock me or whatever. So, What are y'all hearing from teams? Like, after the Lakers workout, did they talk to you? Did they say anything? Or? Uh, no, I didn't talk to them too much. So I did good. Okay. Stuff like that. Okay. If you don't get drafted, would you play in the JBA, the Junior Basketball Association, no. Jazz League? You wouldn't play in that. G League? Would you look at the G League or overseas or – G yeah, I play in the G League and nobody p got, got me. Okay. Or summer league this this summer if you something to do to get into the NBA. Yeah. Now, what about overseas? Would that be a possibility again? I'm not looking forward to going back overseas. So <laughs> hopefully, I get picked. And if not, get on a G League maybe or okay. something like G that. G but. League would be the second option. Now, overseas, I read that you did well. I can do good over there. I'm just saying. Yeah. The lifestyle is it's just different. That was different over nothing to do in Lithuania. Said Ma. Uh, yeah, there you go. When y'all went playing. over there, I thought it was you know, obviously it was a you know, it was some people criticized it, some people said it was good. I I thought there were negatives, but I also thought there were positives because I know how they play over there and I felt like you could learn both of you and LaMelo could learn a lot over there. Um, about that would prepare you better for the NBA than college yeah. or, or high school. I picked up some stuff from over there as far as like coming off of screens and stuff, being mm -hmm. more physical, just stuff you wouldn't get in college really because it's more of a pro, pro type of style. What type of year you think you would have had at UCLA? If I would have played, I would have had a great year. I mean, everywhere I go, I feel like I'm going to do the best. I mean, okay. that's what I train for. I'm not going to say I'm going to have a bad year. What type of year? I know you want to see 30 points, something like that. Uh, <laughs> NCAA it, you title. You know what? It, it, it started off wrong. By when you're recruiting, you're supposed to be wearing number three just because your other guy stay there. Now, he wearing number three. Mm. Now, you can't wear number two. You can't wear his brother's number either because somebody else got it. So, basically, you guys are telling me you're not from the get-go. I'm looking at it raggedy. Second thing is you got him coming off the bench. Boy, supposed to be starting. How are you not starting the best shooter on the team? 
So I knew it wasn't going to last because I was going to be furious from like, uh, okay. you guys are acting like this boy can't play. Yeah, He's yeah. a pure scorer. I mean, you got J.J. Reddick playing for the Clippers. He wasn't the most athletic when he, he was starting. Why? Because he's a shooter. Yeah. When you can shoot and put the ball in the hole and you prove that you're the best shooter in practice or whatever, don't act like you're going to start all these other guys. So just, you were killing in practice. Yes. Yeah, I was doing good in practice. Why do you think, because the Jello is ranked lower than the other sons. Well, why, the, why is that? The, the ranking is, uh, is bogus. I mean, you rank Lonzo high because he did what? Went to Adidas Nation, went to these mm -hmm. other political things. I don't have Jello go to none of those. How do you not rank this boy high? And he won. He the only guy that won 60 games in a row on the best team, best score in the nation. And you don't rank him. You rank him 200 and something. Mm -hmm. Who else got a resume like him? When Lonzo wasn't there, Jello still won another 30 some games. Lost only three. And you telling me and leading the team and scoring for four years in a row, and he not ranked higher than that because he doesn't do the political thing and go to mm -hmm. Adidas Nation and go to McDonald's All American and all this. All right, that's fine. So now you don't give him this ranking. Look at the folks that's ranked. They're not better than him. Not even close. Now, I know, obviously, you want to play basketball. I'm going to throw this out because Shannon Sharper said it. And we've seen you – might, you might know where I'm going. I don't know if he asked you this or undisputed. We've seen great basketball players decide to play football. Tony Gonzalez, you know, played basketball in college, decide to play – Antonio Gates, decide to play tight end in football. You were a tight end, right? Yes. In football. Would you ever consider that if basketball doesn't work out? Would you ever consider starting to work out as a football? Because you, what are you, 240, something like that? 230? 215. Two, oh, 215, okay. But that's, you still, maybe receiver. <laughs> Would you ever consider football? <laughs> no, nah, I've been training basketball my whole life, so. Y'all never work played out football. You I never could, had to play football? I'm cold at football, but. Oh, so? I got uh -huh. hands, that's why. I mean. I'll be nice, but I'm just saying. I play. <laughs> I like basketball better. I played basketball my whole life. Okay. Okay. So I'm right. trying to stay over here. All right. I got you. Now the shoes, man. I, I said these look. These are the best, uh, big baller brand, best looking ones I've seen. These are yours, right? What are they called again? G3 Lux. G3 Lux. All right. Four ninety five. That's the that's the price for big baller. Four ninety five. <laughs> those are fresh though. I like those. All right. So how how did uh Levar uh Lonzo's and Lamelo shoes sell. Their shoes sell well, very good. Okay, very good, man. All my boy Triple B's is the new thing. They all, all right. gonna sell good. Each shoe is gonna get better than the next. On the fact that we're gonna make them better and better. We started off with Zoe, and now folks is like, oh, Mellow shoe is killing Zoe's shoe. Now Jello shoe is killing okay. all of them. Yeah. So we're gonna get better as we keep doing this, and the styles are gonna get better, and we're just gonna get better at what we're doing. Well, speaking of getting better. You know the big talk around town, really around the country, basketball-wise. Uh, LeBron James, everybody thinks he's coming to the Lakers. You said he's coming to the Lakers. He's coming to the Lakers. Like I said, you can start calling L.A. Bron. I said that a long time ago. <laughs> it, okay, who else coming? Paul George. Who's coming with him? Anybody? Who cares? Paul George? Paul, you, Paul you, George want to come. He wants to do come. Do you want hey, Paul who, George? Who don't want to come to L.A.? I don't want everybody. Shoot, whoever want to come, come. Lonzo ain't going to do nothing but make them all better. All right, so he's going he gonna to make LeBron James better. LeBron Heck James yeah. already pretty good. Lonzo will make him better. How's he going to make him better? That's what he does. Lonzo makes everybody better around him. Look at the Lakers, man. Brandon Ingram had his best career. Well, Lonzo. it's been a short career. So. Hold on. <laughs> Julius Randle, best ever. That's true. Lonzo. Kyle Kuzma, he went to Utah. You didn't hear about him. Come over here with Lonzo, rookie of the year. All them guys that got drafted from UCLA, you don't hear nothing about them. Why? Because Lonzo ain't there no more. You ain't TJ Leaf, EK, you don't hear about nobody. Right. He that makes everybody better. He's been doing that all his life. So you don't think you, you put Jello on the Lakers? Lonzo going to be better and Jello going to be better. Well, all right. You say you, Lakers say Lonzo need to get stronger and he needs to shoot better. Yeah. I'm bringing you a stronger and a better shooter. Have you told that to Magic? I told that to everybody. So how, how often do you talk with Magic? Every now and then, every, every once in a while, you know. But we got a great relationship, man. Like I said, uh, at least they will listen to some of the input that I have. Okay. I know more about my boys and the way they play more than anybody. So you can take what I'm, what I'm telling you or not. You want to be successful? My boys been winning a long time. They do win. 
So they, you think, because last year when you said, you know, Lonzo not playing enough in the fourth, Luke's lost the team, Luke yes. Walton. Everybody, a lot of people felt like, including myself, you know, man, Magic got to talk to LeVar. What are you going like, to tell me? I'm a grown so man. So he, he never reached out to, no, like. He, he don't have to. That's Magic. He don't do his thing. The media going to flip it sideways, and you need to go talk to him. And I, you don't need to do nothing. He ain't mad. You never yeah. got any We never any got any of him never was about. butting okay. his. Because I'll tell you what, Magic is two things, a businessman and a winner. Ball boys are good for business. Okay. And we win. Like, you, you put them expectations out there. If you don't put them out there, you don't have no goals. You're supposed to win 50 games. And the way I put 50 out there on the fact that you have 80 games in a, in a season, I know my boy's better than winning at 40, 50% wins. He's never been a 50% winner. He's right. always above that. So I figure he can squeeze out 10 more games somewhere without getting hurt. But if you don't know how to play him, he's been playing through high school, never been subbed. College, play the whole game. But don't play him six minutes here. Rest him for 10 minutes, go 100 miles an hour again, take him out, put him in. That's new to him. And it's like, man, you got me going 100 miles an hour, then sit me down for 10, 15 minutes, and then bring me in the last quarter. How about just let me play 12 minutes last quarter without bringing me out? And watch, up 20, we're going to stay in the front. Down 20, we're going to come get you. He's a winner. He's going to win. And that's why when I talked about uh, the excuse for the Lakers was they're a very young team. I say, okay, now you got to put the blame on yourself too now, Luke, because you're a very young coach. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, don't just blame them. I, it's a young man's game. You got all the young horses. But I said, Luke is losing the team on the fact that people were coming to the sideline without high fiving each other. Two things are going to happen when I said that. One is, he's not going to do the job. They're going to bring somebody else in. Or they're going to band together and say, whoa, we're going to ride for our coach and we're going to play together. And then they found out that guess what? You got to have a general. And he found out that Lonzo was the general. That's why they started doing better. And mm -hmm. that's why the games that Lonzo missed, they didn't look good at all. But you say, you know, okay, Lonzo's the guy. Not Brandon, not Julius, not Kuzma. Not a, I ain't saying the best on the team. I'm saying the guy that relates to everybody. To show you how good Lonzo makes people. Larry Nance and Clarkson look very good at the Lakers. You was like, man, that's the coldest sucker ever. We got a great trade. They go to Cleveland. They, oh. They over in Cleveland looking raggedy as I don't know. Like, like who put them in the league? LeBron didn't make them no better. Nance had a few moments, but LeBron yeah, didn't yeah. make them no better. Lonzo make them look like Lonzo they go. makes players better than LeBron does. Yes, you can tell. That's what he does. That's his gift to make everybody better. Not just giving them the ball at the right time, but his his demeanor that allows them to be easy going and flow and just be like, man, this guy right here. So I, I want to play with him. Everything I hear from the teammates is that Lonzo's a great guy. You know, we know he's got a great relationship with Kuzma. How do you talk to the players? Do they? Because uh, obviously you've said things and people are like, wow, how's that going to sit in the locker room? Mm -hmm. Do you have any relationship with the other Lakers and things like that? I don't that? have a relationship with any of the guys, but sometime after the game, I, I'll talk to them. You know? And it's all good. Even, even like I told, I told Julius a long time ago, man, when he was coming off the bench, I said, you need to be starting. But hang in there. They're going to need you for the playoffs, man. That's what I told him way back in the day. <laughs> and, you know, you know, just like Nance and Clarkson and all them, man. I look at Clarkson, I'm like, when he's with the Lakers, why are they playing him at the one? And no team in the NBA is going to play him at the one. He wanted to score. Mm -hmm. Now you're taking Lonzo's minutes playing, flipping in and there. And I was like, there's too many people trying to do um, Kyle Kuzma, uh, Rando, the other big guy. And Nance, there's too many people in one spot. So I was like, I said, Nance and what's the name got to go? And they end up going. And people looking at me like, whoa. And I said, Julius Randle got to start. He ended up starting and balling out of control. So, yeah. And then I said, you know what? Lopez and Lonzo was the only one to got him to play down that post. You seven feet. He loved to shoot threes. I ain't saying don't shoot no threes. Mm -hmm. But you need more time down low. That's yeah, why the second I half agree. they did better. Because he wasn't taking all those threes. Lonzo said, you get down there, I'll give you the ball. Yeah. And that's why he's like, they can't stop me. No, they can't stop me. Big shoulders down low. <laughs> Take a three every now and then. Do you do you think Luke's a good coach? What do you think of Luke as a coach? Luke is a good coach. I ain't got nothing. The media was like, Olivar don't like Luke. I like Luke. He's a good coach, but he had to, he was trying to please too many people. Okay, you can't do that. You got to have a rotation. You can't just be in all these games trying to figure out how you're going to, 
Are oh, we going to do good this time? We're going to do, mm -hmm. ah, we, no, have a set rotation. There's usually about seven, eight guys. Any, anybody else want to play? We up 30, you in. We down 30, you in. But understand that, he didn't know who his guy was. Should it be Brandon? Should it be Julius? Mm -hmm. Should it be Brooke? Should it be anybody? But should it be Lonzo, the guy coming in? But now he understands the general is Lonzo. Get a ball to Lonzo and let him make the decisions at the end if he's going to shoot or pass you the ball to shoot. Now, like you said, Lonzo's obviously great with the ball in his hands. LeBron has been a guy that's got the ball in his hands a lot. How would that dynamic work? Would, he, would LeBron have Here's, to more play off the ball? Uh, LeBron has never played with nobody like my son, which is Lonzo get the rebound. And before you think about dribbling, he's going to throw it to the other end, knowing LeBron can outcatch anybody. So LeBron, I'm just going to get on the wing. And then LeBron has got that IQ to like Lonzo, dang, Lonzo's over there. I just got the rebound. He'll be like, oh, shoot, Lonzo. Now you got both of them throwing these long passes. Mm -hmm. They used to throw these long passes with him and Dwayne Wade, then they put him on the highlights. And I said, man, they playing just like my boys. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this wonderful pass right over the top. Oh, my God, touchdown. Should we be doing that all day at Chino Hills. <laughs> uh, if I ask you, look in the camera and give a, your recruiting pitch to LeBron James, to the Lakers. My recruiting pitch to LeBron James is if you want to do what's best for his career, you can't win three or four championships in Cleveland. To make you better than Michael Jordan, you have to say you've won a championship every team you've played on in the NBA. That makes you the best player ever. So if you want to come play with one of the best players ever, which is going to be Lonzo Ball and LiAngelo Ball, that's all we need. Zo, Jello, LeBron, championship. <laughs> Do you think LeBron is better than Jordan? LeBron is better than Jordan? Heck yeah. But Jordan is the best of all times because of the winning. But the, you know, as but, a but, player, but, but as a player going to going at each other, man, they're always going to say whoever wins the most is going to be the best. That boy went to the finals every time and never lost. That makes you the best. Me one on one, never lost. That makes me the best. <laughs> now you said one on one, you could beat Jordan. One on one. What I'd about kill him. what about LeBron? LeBron, I kill him too. And I hate that he's too slow. And I was way <laughs> I was way stronger than these guys. They, I mean, they lightweights. I was two seventy, benching five hundred pounds. Jumping out the gym, 48 inch vertical with ease. So I know in my drive to win one on one, can't nobody beat me. So if LeBron goes to the Lakers next year, yes, regardless of who else is there, what? How do they finish the year? If LeBron goes to, you do not give my sons the best player in the world. Don't think they're gonna win a championship? That's too easy. So next year, championship. Next year, championship. Next year championship. You need Jello though. You gotta have that dead eye shooter on the side that's just gonna be like, you know what? We gonna win. We gonna we gonna stop people and we gonna win. Jello, he'd have been like, yo. Uh, let me get KD and Lonzo will be ready to double team at all times. And then we'll let LeBron roam and do his thing. We gonna get steals and hey, lock up the people. They should have let me coach. They would have had a better chance of winning. You want to coach? Is, you what? Wanna coach the Lakers? The only way I coach the Lakers, like I said before, the only way I coach them, all three of my boys are. And I'm only going to coach them one year just to show them how good I am. <laughs> now, it, chances are, if all three of your boys make the NBA, chances are they're going to be on different teams. Oh, You know that. Are, no, 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 no. Come on. Chances of coming in the league with his own brand, what's the chances of that? Slim none. So Who's in are, there like that? Your boy. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I make so much money, man. These triple Bs, you know what they stand for? Billion, billion, billion. <laughs> I buy my own goddamn team and go scoop them all up. How's that? All right. Well, speak, speaking of teams, you got the JBA. Coming yes. Up. LaMelo's playing in that. <clears throat> yes. That starts in two weeks? Yes, less than two weeks. On okay. the 21st, June 21st. You can go to JB, jbaleague.com and get the schedule. Now, the players, I know you, you want it to be a league for – Guys that rather than have to go to college, they yes. just come One out and, done. and get ready. Okay. Are they, is that the type? Because I know most of the top high school Man. players going straight to college this year. Let what me, kind of players you getting? do you have I this got year? the best players on the fact that I got 64 kids and every one of them got a story. They hungry. Some vices stop them from doing okay. whatever to get to that. 
One kid, man, I got a kid, I don't, I don't know his name, six, seven, jump out the gym, shoot the jumper. His mom didn't turn in the paperwork that you, that you have to have to go to college. Hmm. Where was he going to go? I don't know. I was just like, I ain't never seen I ain't, I'm just watching him practice and play, man. I got another kid that's, sometimes he'd be thinking about some bad things that happened. He's about 6'10". You, you'll see him on the L.A. team. Can okay. shoot, run, play like Brandon Ingram. Okay. Just, just a natural. But sometimes he had these vices. I think he had a, uh, his sister died or something. So sometimes he gets in that low and be like, mm -hmm. God dang. And I could see him doing that in class and people saying he don't give a F and he's not paying attention. But he loved that game of basketball. So you got to go to JUCO. He had about, they said, 40 teams that wanted him when he was in high school. Okay. He's 6'10". He can shoot the three and run. Okay. Don't get tired. Jumping, you know. And another kid is, is, I think he's better than Trey Young. Oh, really? 5'10". You cannot stay in front of him. Got the floater. He got it all. He from Oaktown. And, man, little buff sucker boy. <laughs> but he going to play with Melo, and they going to fall out loving He's him. He's on the L.A. Yes, team with Melo? Yes, it, it, it sounds like you, everybody you mentioned been on the L.A. team. It sounds yes. like you stacked the L.A. Yes. team. No, then they got another kid, 6'9", <laughs> about 280, out of St. Louis. He played for the Atlanta team. They call him Big Jelly. Oh, my God. You see this boy. I, I mean. He was built. He a fat dude or something. Big country. Big he, he, he got them finger rolls. He got the jump hooks, the jumper. Okay. He cold. Okay. He cold. Okay. I told him, Zion okay. better. He said, Zion who? <laughs> he said, he don't want to see me. He big, so but he can dribble. Oh, can, really? Yes, How tall like is guard. he? He's 6'9". Really? But he thick. And so he what's got, his story? He, he what, How old is he? He's, he's, he, just turned, he just turned 19. So he's a year or two out of yeah, high school? He, no, he's he getting out of school? high school now. Okay. He's 18. He's just turned. I think he's, yeah, he just turned 19. So let me ask you this. He was supposed this. to graduate this year. He was like, man, I'm cool. I just want a ball, man. I love it. All right, all right. So these guys got that passion, man. And, and, and like I said, some of them had these other vices which not are not going to allow you to play basketball because mm -hmm. you have to go through a different lane. Now, if everybody been going this way to the club and I go to the back door, I say, hey, now y'all can get in here. A few people can go to the back and say, hey, the next thing you know, everybody can go that way. Then I open another club. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what this is with the JBA. Well, I was going to ask you about your boys um Lamelo and Jello, mm. why not go with them just the traditional route as far as finishing up high school one year in college and I, you say UCLA didn't start out well from the right, get-go right. but you know with Jello, because mm -hmm. a lot of people have said why not just have him go through high school get recruited and play one year of college because we are we're the big ballers we do things our way if things don't work out this way, we do something else and keep on moving. We was only there for one and done anyway. Like 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 the guys that whatever happened with Jello, we had to do something different. Sometimes mm -hmm. you got to take a step back and, and go forward. So check this out: Jello is the biggest name in the draft. On the fact that the NCAA is not going to allow you to get this big because they're going to promote their university. But Jello, I mean. He worldwide on the fact that he took some sunglasses. Everybody in the world know him. <laughs> so his name is out there. He got his own show. Ball in the family. He got his own gear, G3. Played overseas. I mean, the NCAA will not allow you to get that big. We will do a Foot Locker commercial, man. Jello's going to be in it. How is this guy you in going it? going to do a Foot Locker commercial? Already done. You'll With see With Foot Locker? So I thought you said you yes. weren't going to put them in stores, the what? shoes. Shoes, the shoes are not in store, but Jello is going to be in the commercial. How? And he ain't supposed to be drafted? With Foot Locker? We already did it. We already That's did the commercial. Right. You'll see it when it comes out. When's it coming out? It's coming out during the draft. All right. Just like Lonzo did it, balls are good for business. <laughs> Shoot, he ain't even in the top ten. He in there longer than everybody. Now, I've said this. I obviously like you. Um, but some people feel, you know, they don't like your, your antics, you know, well, and all people, that. Yeah, and okay. I have said that I think your sons, they need to be good enough in the NBA to outweigh the distraction that you bring. Whether good or bad, it's a well, distraction. Well, the distraction you know? is for you guys. The distraction ain't to my boys. As you see, they keep on rolling. Well, I mean for the team. Like, there ain't like, no distraction for the team. Like Tebow. People felt like Tim Tebow, he was a distraction just because he was so – popular yeah. and so you know people like well he should be playing he should be playing right and they felt like if he's not great teams don't want him because they don't want mm -hmm. a backup 
that is a celebrity. Right, right, you right, see right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So I'm saying I, I felt like at times, man, the, the boys better be great because if dad is if they're coming off the bench and dad's like, yo, they should be starting. Yeah. They should be averaging 20. It could be, you know, that could keep them out of the league because people just wouldn't want that distraction. Have you ever thought about that or Never. what are your feelings you on that? You know what? My boys are going to go where they're supposed to be. Whatever's going to happen, they're going to line up. they got great work ethic and the determination for them to get on the team. Somebody's going to believe in them. And so wherever they land, that's where they're supposed to be. And like I said, there's no distraction on that part. If you believe them, you don't worry about that. But my boys are superstars, all of them. So they're winners. They're going to win. Like I said, Lonzo being a distraction, me being a distraction, that's nothing. People at the inside that make the decisions, they know what my boys is about. And it's about that winning. And they're very good at what they do, which is play basketball. And a lot of people that's sometimes haters, that's the ones who be like, well, he's getting too much this, too much that. Lonzo was the most talked about rookie ever on the fact that I say <laughs> he's the greatest ever and he's the best in this and everybody won't be like, oh, LeVar is talking. But whether it happens or not, like being rookie of the year, I say he's going to be rookie of the year, but why wouldn't I say that? He's the best player. Now well, everybody says. Good rookies this year. Yeah, they all right. <laughs> Donovan hey, Mitchell, hey, Ben okay. Simmons. Here's what makes you a good rookie. You got to do something after that. Then they can talk about you as a rookie year. You know, who was a rookie? Uh, uh, exactly. Oh, okay. Nobody knows. <laughs> hey, I, see I, I, huh? Brogdon, Malcolm Brogdon. Who? who? Yeah. who? In Milwaukee. Wait, 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 what's his name, though? I don't even know. Is he in the league? I don't know. I'm just saying that's how relevant <clears throat> rookie of the year that's is. That's a good point. That's legit. You can talk about rookie of the year when you talk Nobody about cares. Magic mm-hmm. in the in championship and he had that one game where he, he mm-hmm. won the championship. Mm-hmm. He did some things as a rookie, but who cares about rookie of the year? It's just a good momentum on your, on your chest. What did you year. think of Lonzo's rookie year? I thought it was great. Check this out, man. The boy got 10, 7, and 7. That's as bad as he going to get. He going to do it but go up from there. Mm-hmm. He going to do it but go up. I'd rather have him like 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 Donovan Mitchell and, and, and Tatum. They, they better make them playoffs every year now. <laughs> Look at you, baby. Hey, let's see where you go from there. Can you handle all that? Let's start at the bottom and everybody dogging you out. As opposed to starting at the top, everybody talking about how good you are, and then you're not starting doing too good. You start falling down. Then you start second-guessing yourself. I'd rather have Lonzo do the worst he ever did the first time coming up and go up from there as opposed to being the best and then you don't hear about him no more. Did what what now I don't know what he shot what he shoot from the free throw line at UCLA. It was probably it wasn't that bad, right? It, it wasn't that good. He wasn't at the free throw he, line. So he wasn't much. so he, he struggled. The, he, I was surprised how much he struggled at the free throw the, line. The free throw line, he was just throwing, what, what he was was just throwing the ball up there, man. And they don't know how to uh tell him Lonzo. Yeah. This is how they coach Lonzo, like this. Hey, Lonzo, you just got a repetition. It's okay. Settle down. You, me, I would have told him, hey, man, put the ball in the hole and quit effing around. Mm-hmm. If you want to play, play. If you're not, don't even do nothing. But let somebody else just pass the ball, man. They don't do him like that. Have you, and you've told, I know you've said publicly they need to coach him hard. Have you, you said to that to them hard. privately? Look, well, I, stop I, I told him, stop babying him. I said, there's a way. But if that's not in you like that, he, he, he responds to that because okay. that's the way I got him, you yeah. know. I don't even respond to him like, hey, well, Alonzo, what do you think, man? You're going to be all right, you know? Steve Alford, a little more mild-mannered. Ain't nobody wanted They want to. I told him when he went to Australia, I said he was raggedy because you never got on him for taking them raggedy mm-hmm. shots and doing that stuff. You tell him go out there and get a win, and he'll go out there and get it, but you got to let him go out there and get it. Now, what's he working on this? The jump shot is what everybody was saying. His form is going to stay the same. Is that his form is definitely going to stay the same, you know. Okay. Everybody who shoots the ball, I, I think out of all these great shooters, nobody shoots the same. Reggie Miller is like a push mm-hmm. shot. Mm-hmm. Larry Bird on the side of his face. Jamal Wilkes around the yeah, head. Yeah. McAdoo push. I mean, everybody perfect your shot. The, the one thing I wondered, because I agree with you, from three, you know, you shoot the way you shoot. But the mid-range off the dribble, which a lot of guys don't do that anymore. His mid-range. But that was the one thing I wondered, you know, when he's on the mid-range, if he's got to swing it around. No, that can his end mid-range it. is a nice jump shot, and it's on the right side. So that's side. a different – is that a it's different, a different form? shot. So he it's shoots different that shot. He shoots a different shot when he okay. shoots the mid-range. Okay. Yeah, he's always did like that, so. So that's not – that won't be that, a problem. That won't be – here's the thing. When, when he's with his brother, he more relaxed – that ball gonna drop in because when they go to 24, they ain't hang together. Anytime they're together, he don't miss no shots because he's <laughs> at ease. Can you imagine him going to practice every day with his brother? So anything 
going wrong or whatever, he lean on. What are you going to say if everybody else is like, hey, man, you heard what your dad said. Yeah, yeah, he got yeah, his brother. Yeah. They like, man, Pops is crazy. Man, he was, they crazy. They thinking about this. He going to have a great time with, with, with Jello. It's a lot of things Lonzo got going on. Clothing, uh, his brand, about to have a baby. And if you're just riding by yourself all the time, you don't talk about that stuff. You ain't going to call me and be like that. You know, this is on my mind. Yeah, You're going to toughen it out. You're going to do your thing. But. Just like 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 Zo with the tattoos. I didn't know he got tattoos, but Lonzo told me before he must have known. He was like, "Dad, I'm about to get a tattoo." I was like, "I don't do that, son. Leave that stuff alone." And that's the, you know, him. he got him. You know, and then I found out why he got him. He said, "I didn't want you that mad at Jello," and I want to say I got so him you, first. So you got tattoos first. Yeah. And you didn't tell him. Yeah. So why didn't you tell your dad? <laughs> I knew he didn't like him. Yeah. I mean, but he, I knew he was gonna see him eventually. I just didn't know when. So then Lonzo got him because Jello got him to yeah. support. Yeah, so so he, he said, I don't want you mad at both of them. So then, like I was furious and uh, Lonzo called me and he said, you know what, Dad? Uh, at the end of the day, we still family. So you can be mad. Now, I was over in Lithuania when I saw him. So I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be over here, him trying to play ball. And now he walking around at me. Like, My dad's disgusted at me. Yeah, so now yeah, I said, yeah. son, come here. Let me see why you put them on there, because you ain't know. Tattoos have a story to tell. Mm -hmm. What story are you going to tell in Chino Hills? That you was on a river and, and <laughs> hanging in the tree? I mean, you ain't, got, you ain't talking nothing yeah, tough. Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, but uh, his, his, his reasoning for putting all that on his chest, looking like a wild man, is, is well, he looks down and everybody's doubting him. And he been in, uh, he look at it like the lion, uh, and being in the situation over in China or whatever. Okay. So he got prevailed and, and, and his buddy that died. And I'm just like, okay. Then he was like, I got, he had a star with his mom's initial and me over here. And it was just like, well, maybe you have to look at that every day to get you to say, you know what? I ain't okay. listening to what nobody's saying, man. I'm going to do my thing. So that's all on your chest. It's all right. there. You got sleeves? Because people say, I've talked to NBA players, they say they had one or two and was like, yeah, I'm just going to get one more. Hey, but people say they're addictive. And next thing they, I know, they, they got are. sleeves. And they all are. That. You, you, I got him before he got his sleeves. You, I got you him. You told him. I told him. No more? Lonzo got him here. Next thing you know, he got born the ball here. And he got it here. There you go. I say, yo, Zo, I know you don't want to hear this, son, but that's enough. We not that. <laughs> that's enough, man. I said, there's a reason everybody don't get endorsement deals from doing it. They all mm -hmm. tatted up. And it's not for that. You can't yeah. hold no baby in the hospital all tatted up with yeah. your arms and stuff. Yeah. Now, uh, Jello got the ones on his stomach. And then I had to give him the heart. Show him that other one, man. <laughs> See? Tell him what to say, man. Okay, that's a line. That's nice. That's a yeah. line with a ball. Built for this. Built yes. for this. Okay. And so you know, know what I told him? Lighten my salvation. Okay, whom shall I I said, son. That's enough. I got to tell you to stop now before you get it on your neck and on your they're arms. They're addictive. They're, right. they're addictive, but, addictive, but that's how you do it. But I told him, I said, hey, son, uh, both of y'all. You done? Done. I told him they done. I he said, man, he, no, no more. I know <laughs> he wants something on his arms or something like that, man, on his back or something. But I'm like, no, that's enough, son. I told him and that. I said, y'all, I know y'all grown men. Y'all your own guy. But listen to me, son. That is enough. Because like you said, you're going to get one. You're going to get yeah, two. Yeah, you're going to yeah, keep yeah. going. This is what it is. That that's what people have wondered. I've wondered. So, at what point is is there ever a time when we're thinking Lonzo at this point because he's mm -hmm. the adult, you know, making his own money, has right. his own job. Can they come? Does he? Can he come to you and say, "I want to do something differently," or I don't? You know what I mean? Well, like disagree not, he's with he's, you. Basically, he's, he's not going to come to me and say, "I want to do something differently." It's just going to do it. Like Jello, okay. know I don't like tattoos. He went and did it anyway. So people talking about be your own man. They are their own man. Okay. All I can do is advise them, and, and they're going to do what they want to do anyway. So I don't. I, I just be like, nah, son, you shouldn't do this just because of this, this, this. this. I tell them, I, my dad ain't got no tats. I ain't got no tats. Yeah. But you know the fact I don't like them, you go get them anyway. What else can I do? Yeah. You're still my son. Yeah. I can't knock you out talking about it. I told you don't get them, but you still got them. <laughs> yeah. You know, Lonzo the same thing. But I can tell them, like, hey, man, don't do that no more. They might take that and be like, okay, I ain't going to do it no more. So that, that's a revelation to a lot. Because a lot of people feel like Lonzo was just doing everything you said. You know what I mean? Like but why, wouldn't, his own why wouldn't Lonzo do the things that I've taught him if I'm the one who bred him like that? 
So his likings are the same as my likings. Mm -hmm. So if I've always steered him the right way, why would he get go negative on me now? So man, my dad's always had me do the right thing. So did, there's no second guessing if I've been 20 years right. Did he ever come to you during the season Never. and say, Dad, you shouldn't have said that? I don't or, have that why type of son. I don't have that type of son. Does he even say anything about it? What are you gonna say about it? Just, he he just, know how we he roll. <laughs> we roll together. He don't come off. Don't be complaining. Don't be doing nothing to me. But he's not like that. He's fine. You guys on the outside, it's like, oh, it's got to be bothering him. It's got to be this. And like I was telling him about the training. I was just talking to uh, Shannon Sharp. He said, you can't run no heels during the season. We, we did that when we was playing. The Chino heels never get hurt. Condition your legs to do all this running. Now they don't you, do no running like that. So you felt like the – because there was talk that Lonzo was out of shape. You know, early in the yes. season, he's the stamina. You felt they weren't pushing him hard enough. They wasn't pushing him hard enough on the fact that you're not doing no conditioning. You ain't doing no strength training with no real weights. You're doing rubber band training and, and mm -hmm. with the balls. Just like they was talking about the, uh, the trainer over there. What's his name? Gunner. I said, man – you, you ain't trained no killers. You trained Kardashians and Sylvester Stallone. Them are Hollywood. Bounce on the rubber balls and rubber bands. I want you to see some dudes. I want to see some dudes you trained that got bigger. And don't act like you're the best trainer because Julius Randle didn't train with you. Mm -hmm. Brandon Ingram didn't train with you. Now all of a sudden, my son, oh, I got a great program for him. He ain't going to make no name off my son. Hmm. He ain't make no name off. I had him better than that when he got here. Bigger, stronger, and you can break him up. Now he, well, I like to work around the problem. I mean, you the problem. <laughs> you a Hollywood trainer. I mean, go back to Hollywood. Have you ever heard your dad say something and kind of wince like, ooh, wow. No. I wish he wouldn't have said that. Or wow, he said that? Or No, I already know how you talk. I mean, what he's saying got nothing to do with me, really. I mean. <laughs> he gonna say what he want to say. Now none of y'all, I don't know. I maybe Lamelo. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I'm wrong about Melo. You and Lonzo though seem quiet. Or at least, like you said, you're not quiet, but you don't have the public persona like your dad. Why is that? I just gotta get used to people. I don't. I don't go in loving everybody like that. I mean, if I don't know you, I'm not going. So you kind of like that with you your like boys that. and your friends, but just publicly. You publicly. Know. I mean, if you ask me something, I'm going to answer it. I'm not going to be shy or nothing, but I don't know. It's just how I am. I say the upbringing. You're up in the South Central. It's a different breed. I'm Chino Hills. It's different. If yeah. you ain't never been, you know, braggadocious, trying to be the best player in the neighborhood, there ain't really no neighborhood like that in Chino yeah, Hills. Yeah, yeah. It's like, man, come on by my house. We have some dinner, get on the computer, <laughs> play some video games, play whatever you want to do. But we ain't going down to the local park and all the brothers from the hood is down there. You're not going to do that. You know, and you got to be forceful to be on the court. And when you're winning, you got to be kind of crazy. You can't just be like, oh, we won. And when well, my boys were not put in that environment, but I've taught them how to win and be dominant. Mm -hmm. So that's why the my craziest one, let's look how funny this is. They so quiet and, and, and mild, mild, mild mannered. And the wildest one don't have the tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mello was like, both of them, Dad. I know I'm he the best because I'm like you. Me and you don't have no tats. But these two, you got to watch those guys with tattoos. That's what Mello tell me. I said, man, you something else, man. <laughs> so, that, so you've always been like this. When you were growing up in South yes. Central, you yes, were the same. Yes, I was always loud, always the best way. one. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. Anything else you want to say? What I want to say is... Everybody come to JBAleague.com on the fact that it wasn't supposed to be no league. I said, man, the show is a lot of people here today for something that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, you got your own league, man. It sounded like it was crazy back in December, but now it's here. And they got to learn the hard way. We're going to get some folks out of this league, and they're going to look back and say, man, this dude is just making history. And that's all I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, Leangelo, thank you, man. Good luck with everything. Yes, yes, of yes. Of course, yes. LeVar, thanks. Yeah, we good. We good, man. And good luck with the JBA, yes. man, and, hey. and the draft. Thanks. All right, here we go with another segment of Knockdown J, my man Jason McIntyre. Good to have you in here. Great to be here again, Chris. All right, what you got for me? Oh, boy. Make I mean, it good. What don't you I have? into free agency to draft. Yeah. You should have some good After stuff. After that scintillating finals, right? I mean, geez, so much basketball to talk about. 
Let's start with uh, your buddy LeBron. I don't know, are you guys having dinner anytime soon when he's out no here in soon. L.A., as I've been saying for 11 months now? Um, yeah, you really now, got that you scoop. you strangely, probably. strangely have LeBron as, like, the fourth best fit with the Lakers? No, I, no. I had the Lakers as the fourth place I'd like to see him go. It had nothing to do with fit. I do think he probably ends up with the Lakers because I think it's the best – combination of family and winning potentially okay. so, so i think that's listen, probably there's a lot of at. hypotheticals maybe Kawhi's in play maybe chris paul for now let's just stick with the two max slots lebron and paul george go to the lakers okay that's the most likeliest right. anyway and you know you've got the ancillary players lonzo uh brandon ingram kuzma josh hart coming off the bat like you've got a solid group of players there I got to ask, they won, I believe, 35 games this past season. Is it too much of a reach if I tell you, Chris, LeBron and Paul George make the Lakers the favorites Ooh. in the West? Yes. Are you ahead telling of the me that? I am telling you that. Let me, I'll give one, one stat before we jump in. In the modern era, no team has gone to the finals five years in a row. Not the Miami Heat, not the Cavs, not the Lakers, not the Celtics, not the Pistons, not the Bulls. Not Nobody's anybody. done it. The wear and tear on body and mind and the dissension in the ranks, it happens everywhere. Warriors are going for their fifth straight trip to the finals next year. I, and we just saw them almost lose in seven to a Houston team that featured wing guys like Trevor Ariza and P.J. Tucker and Eric Gordon. Listen, man, they were up 11 at the half on the Warriors in game seven. I think this Lakers supporting cast is going to be good. I would make LeBron the favorite in the West next year. Let me ask you this. In the modern era, have we ever seen two teams meet in four straight finals? Um, or in the, the, any era, not just the modern era. I don't, I don't know. No, good... We just saw it for the first okay. time. So it's a season of firsts. Okay? Oh, okay. So you're so saying this is going to be another first. No, yeah. the, the challenge for the Warriors, if that's all the Lakers do, if they only get LeBron and Paul George. <laughs> only get no, two top 15 They're players. a contender. There's no question. And they could get there. They could. I wouldn't be shocked if they upset Golden State. But the favorite, favorite. no. The favorite is still the Golden State Warriors. Here's why. The Golden State Warriors' biggest opponent next year is going to be themselves. Yes. It, it's not anybody else. It's not even Houston. As good as Houston is, as much as Houston pushed them, it is the Warriors themselves. And here's the thing. Because remember, they're all young. They're all still in their prime. Uh, and they've only won two straight. They haven't even three-peated, which we've seen s several teams yes. do. I mean, the Kobe, Shaq, Lakers, and Michael Jordan most recently. They've three-peated. So I think if LeBron and Paul George go to the Lakers, that will heal the potential lack of motivation problem okay, with now, the Warriors. Like, if they go to the Lakers, the Warriors all of a sudden are hyped. Well, okay. it's easy to say okay. that, Chris, now, but they just, just loaf this through the year, entire season. But this year, who was there? Even Houston. 65 Chris, wins? Yeah, but that was accumulating. It wasn't like initially everybody thought, oh, wow, Houston's going to be challenging them because they got Chris Paul. And they did. We didn't see till later in the season that, okay, Houston may be a really right. legit contender. We would know from jump LeBron and Paul George and the other players they have, yeah. the Lakers are going to be legit. Now, do I expect that to lift the Warriors to go out and win 65, 70 no. games? No. Yeah. I think they'll still somewhat cruise and maybe yeah. win 60, 62 games, something like that. But come playoff time, yeah. I still think they would be okay. the best team. Now, I'm, I'm with you. Anytime you get LeBron, that's true. A Paul George is number yeah. two, and they would have some good players. They would be up there. Yeah. A lot. Of, by the way, but a I lot would favor of Golden State. That's of all I'm Paul saying. Paul George in the Twitter streets. I mean, I, 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 I hate seeing people go after him. Oh, what has he done? Is he that good? Listen, man. People playing with Russell Westbrook and then leave. We've seen them get demonstrably better. Okay, that happens. And you're talking about well, he's LeBron. Not, hold on. Paul George is not going to get much better than what he did last oh, year. He had a good season LeBron last year. James. What, yeah, what do you expect him to do? He averaged 21 and he shot 40% from three. What do you expect him to do? I think he could be a better all-around player. He shot a career high player. from three. Yes, career. He played great defense. He was very, I think he could be a better player with LeBron. What is? What else will he do? I think he could be a, like an all-defensive second team he's guy. All, he's that now. He's that level now. Well, he was good at defense most of the season, and then they lost uh, Cephalo, not Cephalo. And Andre Robertson. Andre Robertson. 
And you saw him take a little step back because he had to shoulder the defensive burden and then do a lot offensively. Paul George is a great defender. He's become a very good three-point shooter. Oh, totally. He's going to average always around 21, 22, 22 points a game, whether he's with yeah. LeBron, Westbrook, whoever. I, I'm just saying he's You're not saying he's going to get out? much. He is what he is, which is a, a, a perennial all-star Top talent. 15 player in the league? Will you? Uh, 15-ish, yeah. So yeah. You're he's getting the, two top 15 guys. And just uh, one last thing. Hunger and motivation are two things we saw with the Rockets a lot. Chris Paul wanted it. James Harden, for a while, wanted it. P.J. For Tucker while, never wanted it. Well, he, he ended up struggling in the final two games without Chris Paul. Game that doesn't mean he didn't want it. Hey, he didn't play that well. I mean, he was playing better early Kevin in the Durant series. Kevin Durant had his struggles. Steph Curry had his poor games. The only one that doesn't really have bad games is LeBron James. Uh-huh. And any point. superstar and is prone to having bad games. that parade where these guys were taking shots, a lot of, a lot of negative signs. LeBron's got a lot of of motivation to overtake these Warriors. Oh, Again, yeah, of course. they interrupted his legacy. His entire last five years has been totally interrupted by Curry and now Durant. Of course he's going to be motivated. Okay. He wants to chase Michael Jordan, so he's he had motivation this I, year. He's I, all, look, I'm with you in saying the Lakers will be legit, you just, and they you will have a shot. They, no! I don't think anybody in their right mind would say they're the favorites. Well, I'm in my right mind, Chris. No, you're uh, not. So you're never we, in your I, right I, I, mind. That's why you're Jay Mack. And you we'll, get knocked down. So, so do we want to move on? I think we'll go to the Celtics. Nah, they would now. be really good. Okay. They would so be really good, but not the So we want to move on to the, the Celtics. Yeah. Uh, Kyrie Irving this week making news, not just because of the flat earth nonsense. Or his Uncle Drew movie. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing no, Uncle t- Drew. Okay. okay. I, you're thought not, you, I, thought you, I know you're going to bring your son. I will see Uncle Drew. You I thought, thought you were going to say the earth is flat. flat. No. Yeah, don't go there, please. <laughs> I've seen uh, pictures of the globe. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, I, I get it. I, we I can't cut. even imagine the earth being flat. Like, like, like I, I, where would the water go? Like, what would be underneath? Yeah. I, it, it feels like he's doing this sw- to promote but, his but movie. I think there are. I don't. I haven't studied it. But I do think there are. In, I think Kyrie's actually intelligent. But I think there are other intelligent people that really believe yeah, this. There's a lot of that. I don't. I don't get why, because it's. I mean, the Egyptians knew the. Oh earth wow! Was circular. Uh, the Egyptian reference. The Bible Bruce says wow, the earth is go. circular. Nicely done. All right. So ask so for basketball. Uh, you know, listen. The Celtics won 55 games. Kyrie was hurt the final 20, missed the playoffs. They still went to Game Seven of the Eastern Conference Finals, and now Kyrie says he's not going to sign an extension, which is understandable. Uh, given he's he got could, a lot of money, he, he can could, make a lot. He more could money. lose eighty to a hundred million dollars if he signed. The so it doesn't make sense. Exactly. So we all. But that. as you know, when this happens, there's chatter. Maybe that he wants to play for the Knicks. He's a Jersey guy. Um, I got to just put it to you, Chris. What What do you think the Celtics should do with Kyrie? He's got one year left. I would assume the choices are trade him, but that's going to be tough because he's got to go somewhere where he's going to sign. Okay. He could uh, he, he could control that process. Do you just wait until next year? And personally, that's my choice. I think this team, Chris, I think they're going to get to the NBA Finals. I think they're going to win about 65 games with Gordon Hayward, the young guys, Kyrie. This team's loaded. Why, why would Boston panic now and do something foolish? The East is basically Boston and Philly when LeBron leaves. Right? Unless you want to toss the Bucks in there or the Wizards. Bucks are going to be much improved with Mike Budenholzer. We'll see. They're going to be good. Uh, I think the Celtics will be the unquestioned favorites in the East. Why would you panic on Kyrie now? Just wait till you get to the finals. I don't think it's panicking make a because it's, a, it's, look, Kyrie, it's, a, it's so many factors in here. And when here's the thing you didn't mention. When he gave the Cavaliers a list of teams he would want them to trade him to, guess who wasn't on that list? Boston. Boston. New York, San Antonio, Minnesota. Miami, Minnesota. Come okay. Back. Well, Kyrie's about basketball. So he saw Kyrie. And Jimmy Anthony Butler Towns, is tight with Jimmy, Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, you know, Andrew. And so that's something you have to think of. So here's what I do. First of all, let's just get this out of the way. If LeBron James wanted to go to Boston, and I think they would be the second best place I'd like to see him go because I'd like to see him stay in the East. If he wanted to go to Boston, even if you saw Kyrie's response when he was asked he about that. He didn't want to play with LeBron. Or two, and he no. already did that. He was like, you know, I've seen everything in this league, whatever management does, we'll see what they do. Like, he clearly didn't endorse LeBron coming there and playing with him. So I would trade Kyrie Irving. No. Hold on. If I could get LeBron James, 
You Hold if, a timeout. If, we need a timeout. You, we have said on this podcast all season, Boston has like a 10-year window of dominance in the East. All their no, young guys. No, I have not. Who said that? I've said that. Dominance? Oh, they, they're going to run the East. Have you heard East. of Joel Embiid and Ben oh, Simmons? stop it. My gosh, they just trounced them in the second round. It wasn't close. Oh, no, Without it was Kyrie. Let me tell you Without how close Gordon it was. Hayward. Let me tell you how close it was. Anybody that watched that series knows it could have been 4-1 oh. the other oh, way. It was almost 4-1, but it was not almost They were 4-1. young guys that didn't know how to win. Yeah. And okay? the Celtics were missing they their best two players. They win. Chris. Well, we don't know who's going to be their best players. Jason Tatum is going to be better than Eventually, Gordon Hayward. Maybe in a few years. Maybe but, next year. So, Chris, maybe. why would you take on LeBron when you go, you're going to have to give up? Because about winning right now. What would you have to give up? Kyrie Irving. That's that's, that's not going to get you LeBron. If you could do a three-team trade, Kyrie, we already showed how he, he's got affinity for the Knicks. So you could send Kyrie to the Knicks, LeBron to the Celtics, and then the Cavaliers could get assets. What Okay, what assets They could get Boston a player, Marcus up? Smart, Marcus Morris. They could get a draft pick. The Celtics oh, got draft well, picks okay, galore. Now that's, that's different. I, I didn't think that... I thought you'd have to give up Tatum or Jalen Brown no, or, why? That, or that Kings pick. No, okay. I wouldn't well, have to give seems... up. I might give up the Kings pick. That, could be, means... a, that could be the number and one I can, pick I next get year. LeBron James. And I, how many picks do I need? I got Le, If I get LeBron James, I've got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier, Al Horford, Gordon Hayward. I mean, come on. So in that instance, mm. I if think you you've don't, already so, agreed okay, to so that. You, no, if in you that, don't have to give up... Uh, Tatum you or Brown. You don't have to. Okay. All right. I think so, that's a little pie in the sky. Why? Cleveland's going to be desperate. Marcus Morris? Cleveland will have no choice. It's either lose LeBron for nothing or get some good young players and, more importantly, but you, draft But the guys picks. you just mentioned aren't very good. You're going to have to pay Marcus, Marcus Smart. Smart. You're going to have to pay him a lot of money. They're already in the luxury tax. They're not paying Marcus, Marcus Smart. Morcus Morris. Yeah. And what here's he? the thing. What's Marcus Morris? I, if I, it means getting draft picks, a Sacramento pick. Well, that's pick. the thing. I don't think Danny Ainge is parting with that Sacramento pick. Why not? For oh. LeBron James and a chance to win it right now. Danny Ainge is they about now. They almost just got to the finals. They were almost one game does away. not cut it. Without their that's two best players. That's a franchise that has 17 championships. Chris, let me put you Almost does not cut if it. If Gordon Hayward and Kyrie Irving are healthy, who wins the Eastern Conference Finals that we just had? Is it about winning the East? Wait, no, no. Answer the question. I don't know what the East uh. is going to look like. I mean, seriously. We don't know if LeBron goes to Philly. Does he go to Boston? What we don't know. Right. And they and I don't put them ahead of Golden State, even if they get there. Now they're gonna be good no matter what. But if you get LeBron James, you're definitely in the finals, and you don't have to risk losing Kyrie Irving for yeah. nothing. I, I, so so number one, in my my like opinion, it. if I can get LeBron, I'm willing to trade Kyrie. Secondly, even let's say LeBron's out of the picture. I'm Danny Ainge. I've got to have a heart-to-heart sit-down with Kyrie pronto and be like, look, I understand why you're not going to sign the extension. We get that. But are you committed long-term to the Celtics? He's not, he's not going to give an answer. LeBron's why never not? given that answer. He's not LeBron James, okay? You're not LeBron James. <laughs> uh, okay, and so this, I'm that, you. If he Word? won't, I want to know. And if you can't commit, if you can't, why wouldn't you? Hold we on. got hold on. We got a great coach. We got a great organization. We're you know a night a good city. Are meant to be no, broken, listen to me. Chris, he's a good city. We got we can like you said we can contend city, for the next ten years. You know, so if you won't commit to that. Then, I, if I'm Danny Ainge, I'm not risking losing him well, for Kyrie nothing. Well, could lie and say, yeah, I'm good. But let me ask you, it was the Spurs on Kyrie's list? Yes. So what about Kyrie for Kawhi? I still, then I need a point guard. I would, tra- I would try to trade Gordon Hayward for Kawhi. There's no way. They're not giving up Hayward. Coming off the injury? Why not? Who's they're taking? Not, hold on, they're not giving up? Well, I, no, Boston I'm sorry. would not me, trade him? I don't think any team's trading for Gordon Hayward coming off the injury. If I'm, Sac- if I'm San Antonio and Kawhi Leonard has told me I'm leaving, you got one more. If you want to keep me this year, I'll play it out. If not, trade I me. I would take Kyrie over Gordon Hayward. Yeah, but if I'm Boston, maybe I don't want to give you Kyrie. So I say... You, we'll give you Gordon Hayward, Sacramento pick, whatever. But that's the I would the rather get Kawhi. You can't lowball them when— I would rather keep when, Kyrie. You can't lowball the Spurs when the 76ers will chase Kawhi. We don't know if the Lakers could chase the Can Houston it, who Rockets. Who the 76ers going to give you that's better than Gordon Hayward? I mean, and and a number one they, pick. They've got draft picks And a lottery galore. pick from Sacramento. They've got draft picks. Do they they've have got that? Dar- Do Dario they have Sacramento's cheap? pick? 
Uh, is he is he Gordon Hayward? He's not, okay. but Dario Saric, I mean, I don't know if you want to toss in Covington. Is he Gordon Hayward? Markel Fultz. I, 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 there's options. But there's a there's a pick. They, Gordon Hayward's they coming off put a together major a decent, injury. They could major. Put, I think there's a decent major. package that could be uh, had. The bottom line is I would consider trading Kyrie. I wouldn't if in you so, I would trade so right him if this I'm, summer. If, if I get LeBron, I would trade him. So you would trade him this summer? If I get LeBron, I would trade him. If it's not LeBron, I would look into it because I don't want to risk losing him for nothing. Now, I'm not saying I definitely would trade him, but I would look into it. Just off the discussion, the heart-to-heart. The I have to like, find ah. out. There's no reason not to be committed to Boston. There's none. We're a great historical franchise. We got great talent around you. We got a fantastic coach, great front office. We can win. It's a great city. Like, what in the world wouldn't you want? That tells me you want to go elsewhere. So instead of risk losing you for nothing, I may trade you now. I don't know. I wouldn't play it out and just say, let's see if we can win it. Because if we don't win it, Kyrie could leave. And even if you do win it, he might leave because he left Cleveland. Okay, my final counter. I know we're running out of time. It, it just feels like Boston's never going to go with what their group is. They're always looking to upgrade that or Danny trade. Danny Ainge does that. At some point, he's done you that gotta, his entire you, front office career. At some point, though, you got to just go with your crew. Like, this group they got, can they win 65 games next year? I don't care about 65 and games. And get I to the finals. I care about the championship. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's what I care about. Right. And that's what Boston cares All about. Right, let's wrap up on this note with uh, your new good buddy, your old good buddy, uh, LeVar Ball. His son... Uh, <laughs> who didn't make first team all rookie, came out with a diss track for some reason. A diss track. Lonzo Ball's played 51 games and he's dissing you his team. You know what a diss track is? I'm vaguely familiar with what a diss track is. Ah, uh, Chris, listen, initially I didn't think, okay, this isn't a big deal. And then you guys started telling me about the Kuzma dig at his father that he doesn't know. And I started thinking about the D'Angelo Russell, Nick Young, what happened with the filming and the social media. And I just, it's just not a good look for the Lakers. You know, you got all these guys getting in the gym, going on Instagram, talking about how hard they're working. Young guys, Donovan Mitchell, Victor Oladipo. And you got Lonzo Ball out here who kind of just feels hat, fat and happy to be in the NBA and be a star. And he's because putting out, he made out made a, a music video? He made video? a diss track and a music video that he put a lot of time into, clearly. Okay. I just don't, I, listen. I you know I wrote last month on the website. I think they're going to trade Lonzo Ball, and then this is added to it, and it just shows an immaturity level that I don't think the Lakers or LeBron want. I, where do you stand on the diss track, look, Chris? I mean, I'm, wait, first wait, of all, let, let, let me add this: if I come out with a diss track this summer about Chris Broussard, <laughs> I don't think anybody and can in the you zone, rapping. and I'm just like, yo, diss track, and what blah, kind of blah, rapper blah. would you? And there's a video. Al Yankovic. You, you got to hear the laughter in this room. <laughs> Um, am I getting invited back to the podcast next year? Or is that, yeah, is that yeah, like this track would be so weak that it, yeah, it well, I'd, I'd it'd welcome be like you push in. a T, we right? make it a theme song. Nah, push a T is no. push a T. Team Drake, He's a legitimate rapper. Continue. All right, um, I'm a legitimate person. Yeah, you are. You are Thank a legitimate you. person. Okay, not rapper, not hooper, none of that. We'll find out about the hooping. Huh? We know. No, we ain't ain't nothing to find <laughs> out. All right, look. Um, the diss track, first let me address you saying, oh, other players are working hard and Lonzo's in the, you know, rapping, making videos. These guys, you can't work out 10 hours a day. The hell you they can't. Have, no, you have other lives. LeBron James is a freaking business mogul. You think he works out as hard as anybody. You still have time for other things. Shaquille O'Neal made Kazam, Blue Chips. Are you comparing movies to a diss track of your own teammate? Uh, no, my point is you said he should just be in the gym not making videos as if you Shaq can't. Shaq had won titles. LeBron had won. Not when he made Kazan. Well, Lonzo shot 30%. Get out of the studio and get in the gym. <laughs> Give me when a he, break. When, Stop when Shaq defending LeBron. Kazan. You're embarrassing yourself, no, Chris. No, what, what I. Ooh. Jeez. Oh, you I'm got sorry me. to sound off, He's but I mean. Mad. Come he on. got me. He shut me down. Come Listen, on. Listen, all I'm saying is there are times to do other things. Okay. That's it. Kobe rapped before he before he won the title. He had the eighth wonder beat. Dun, 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 dun. All Whoa. that. You don't know nothing about that. I, I don't I'm know anything about that. Head, I didn't know about that dance move. Watch Whoa. Get Down. Maybe you learn something about hip hop. Okay, I'll put that on <laughs> anyway, the Netflix anyway, queue. Anyway, anyway, um, my point is this: there uh, they have tons of time. You can do other things. So this is nothing. So I'm not no. Listen to me. Stop interrupting. Okay. I'm just saying the actual time it took 
to write a diss track, to make a mixtape, to make a music video. That's not a problem. That's all I'm saying. You can work hard at your game and do these other things. Now, the diss track, he and Kyle Kuzma have been boys. Yep. They've been going back all year. They have they fun live with close each other. They to each other out yeah, here. They're, they're tight. Yeah. But, where, so I don't have a problem with a fun-loving diss track. However, I do think it went too far when he said, you don't know your dad, so you being sunned. Now you being sunned, whatever the line was. I think Levar, Lonzo thought he was being clever, and you don't know your dad, but now you being sunned. He thought it was a clever line, but that was too personal. Okay, let me that ask was, this. That hit below the Sorry belt because anybody that doesn't know their dad, I imagine... It's a sore spot, and it bothers you. Was this so, a reaction I, to something Kuzma did, or he just came I mean, out of the no, blue? I mean, no, they just... I, I know like they I said, comment on the, stuff, This but. track in general, I don't. I just think that one line went too far. And now, maybe Kuzma doesn't feel that way. I don't know. If, he, if Kuzma's fine with it, then I don't think it'll be a big deal. You're right. It does look kind of amateur hour, and why yeah, are you doing this and that? You're on the Lakers, But man. if Kuzma's not... If, if Kuzma's fine with it, then I think... It could be okay. It, it could be okay. How's the Ben Simmons diss track? W what does his sound like? How about uh, Donovan Mitchell? How's his? I mean, this yeah. is a different oh. era. Jason Tatum got a diss track yet? Uh, this is embarrassing, they, man. Well, no, you can rap. There, Allen Iverson <laughs> rapped. Chris Webber rapped. You know, Kobe, as I said, like putting out a mixtape is not the problem. Okay. The so, problem is how Kuzma takes, and it, it's not a good look for the Lakers. You're yeah, right. Okay, okay. I'm not saying it's not a good look for the Lakers, but if you're I, okay, I, I don't know. And let me, gonna, if you're Magic I, Johnson, I put your Magic Johnson jersey on. I'll loan you mine. Okay. You got Lavar Ball running his mouth about Luke Walton and all this stuff all season. You now have Lonzo, who Magic gassed up at the press conference last year after they drafted him, putting out a diss track. Or the th is everything adding up to man? Let's just move on from this ball. Not nonsense. yet. I mean, it, it, it look if, if, if you Le can get a star. If LeBron's bye. coming, and it's just like look, you got to move line, then you move. Okay, him. another question. But you if 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 LeBron is fine with Lonzo being there, then I don't, I don't trade him immediately. I think Lonzo's going to be really good. Le I would agree with that. He's going to be a good player. LeBron's been in the league fifteen years. He's never really played with rookies and won anything or got to the finals. No well, rookies have ever had an impact. Young players, you mean? Young guys. Because he, he won't be a rookie next year. When Magic talks to Le uh, LeBron, what do you think LeBron's going to say about this stuff? And Magic goes, hey, LeBron, where are you on uh, LeVar and Lonzo? What do you think, you know, what do you think LeBron's going to say? You know him. You know LeBron I, as well I as any journalist what, yeah, out there. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. LeBron typically doesn't like a circus unless, unless he he's it. Pretty, exactly <laughs> the drama. So that if it's a problem, by Lonzo, right? I'm with you on that. If LeBron is like, it's too much. The diss track, the dad's okay. comments, all that. Then yeah, of course I trade I mean, Lonzo. His but if, dad if, if it's not, was on FS1 yesterday and said like, Leangelo is above Paul George, like. Who wants that? Who I wants hear you. that trash? I hear you. And if if it if I it's mean, if it bothers idiotic. LeBron, then of course you move Paul or uh, Lonzo. But you don't think Curry and Kevin Durant are sitting who there did Michael Jordan? Who did he Lakers? win his last three titles with? Um, on the Bulls, like Dennis, who were his teammates? Dennis Rodman. Eh, Rodman was no, like a thir he was like a thirty-year-old guy. Rodman he was a bit of a was, clown sideshow act. Dennis Rodman was doing a lot of crazy stuff. Okay, now can you? Michael Jordan controlled it enough where they could win. It's up to the team I leader. Mean, Rodman was like leading LeBron's, the league in rebounds. Oh no, he he was a great player. Huh. But my point is, a locker room leader, if he wants to, can control that type of stuff. Now, does LeBron want to put forth the energy to control it, or does he? Would he rather move? Yeah. I don't know. Okay, this is great. This is great. No, I mean the point. I'm with no, you. No, it's you're, already no, settled. You just made a if great LeBron point. James doesn't want the, to play on a team with Lonzo Ball because of the rapping, the dad, whatever. Then you trade him. Yeah. What happened when Isaiah Thomas came off the injury and was like, hey, let's practice, and he's taking shots at Kevin Love? What happened like a week later, okay? Well, and this is Isaiah Thomas, the guy the who was all-NBA player. But that wasn't I'm just, just saying, like, LeBron. I mean, Dwayne Wade, first of all, is the one that triggered the talk okay. about Kevin Love, and then Isaiah chimed in. You know, it wasn't working basketball-wise. Uh, yeah. All right. That's what that was. I, gun to your head. Is, Lo is Lonzo Ball in a Laker jersey? Yes. Next, really? Yeah. I'm going to go with no.
He might not be, but you know, gun to my head. I, I, at this point, be such I would a good yes. summer. I'm so geeked about this. And what are we? Why thought? are you ducking me? Basketball I'm not. Wise. You were the one who ducked me last week with the blister. I, it, that was legit. I'm not ducking you. You can't find you, the gym you today. Called, you called the gymnasium <laughs> and said, I don't care right. what I'm gonna you got to do. Out. I'm going to get my phone shut out. This Look game at my down. recent calls, and you can see I didn't call no gym. And I didn't delete no. Uh, come on. You don't think you're going to get stomped? I would like to play basketball. Disrespectful. How so is that? All the Hoopers. D3 you, star. You look, guy who likes to play basketball. You Let's look, have fun. You, I wasn't even a D3 star. I was a D3 starter. Starter. That's it. I wasn't okay. even a star. But you... I didn't make freshman high school basketball. D3 starter. You never starter. played. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You challenging me. I'm, That's I said, disrespectful. We're friends. Did you play lacrosse? What? Did you have, did you play any sport? I've never picked up a lacrosse stick did in my life. Did you play any sport? I will beat you in a decathlon of sports. Did, Tennis, bowling, what, basketball, what, what running. Sport, what anything sport you want to do, do bring it on. Okay, you run. You run. Well, we can, I mean, I don't run, but I will race what, you if what you want to race. You do, <laughs> what do you do well in sports? I, I like to think I can do any sport I mean, what well. sport have you played I'm a natural at athlete. Level? I will play any sport. You want to, I, you, I never picked you, up a you, lacrosse stick. Did you play a no. sport in high school? No. But you're a natural athlete. I will play any sport you want. I know you have we a busy schedule, hanging out with LeVar and Magic and Rich Paul and all your guys. Maybe you could take some time to play some ball with Thank your boys. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Go to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud. Give us five stars. Leave us a comment. 